Support provided by the Richard P. Garmini Fund at the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development. Hi, I'm Ray Hartman, and welcome to season two of Where Art Thou? We've got an amazing lineup of artists and performers to profile this season, plus we have a new segment, which I'll tell you about later in the show. Our first stop today is in Middletown. With its location right on the Connecticut River, Middletown was originally a busy port. Later, it became a haven for refugees and immigrants from around the world. Throw into the mix a thriving liberal arts institution, Wesleyan University, and what you have is a city with a unique blend of history, culture, and art. To help me find out what Middletown has to offer, we have on the line our Middletown curator, Keisha Michael. Keisha is the arts coordinator for the city of Middletown and a lifelong resident. Hi, Keisha. Hi, morning, thanks for coming to Middletown. Oh, I'm so excited for today. Um, First, every time I come to Middletown, it's always energetic. There's a vibe to Middletown. What do you think accounts for that? Well, I think first, uh, a little fun fact for you, Middletown is named one of 100 best small arts towns in the country. So I think if you start there, there's your answer. But in Middletown, we celebrate arts and culture through food and entertainment, shopping and education. and. You know, the Middletown arts sector is heavily driven by the spirit of our leadership of our citizens, our stakeholders, our community leaders, commissions, business owners, our chamber of commerce, nonprofit organizations, schools and universities. So, you know, when it comes to the arts ray in Middletown, it's an all hands on deck initiative. Okay, Keisha, so where are you taking me today? So we're taking you to see Michael Pestel. Michael is a performance and installation artist. He's a professor and a maker educator. And that's just the short list of what Michael does. So I'll let him share with you more. But just to give you a lead in, um, Michael has created a magical world of art. Um, today, he's gonna share with you his method and process and handcrafted instruments that emulate the sound of distinct birds. Oh, wow. So he makes instruments that sound like birds. Yes, so my, your your job is to ask if he will play the bird machine for you. Okay, so uh, so where are we going after that? So then you're gonna, um, you'll be on the same side of town, I believe, and you're gonna skip over to master artist of textile and visual art, Mr. Pierre Sylvain, self-taught um, and, and extremely driven. Um, I just want to say Pierre embodies uh, the process of becoming an artist. He's a true inspiration. And we as a city have watched him grow for the past decade or more. And uh, Pierre has made the, the concerted dis effort to, be, to put his passion into practice and become a career artist. So among his paintings that you will see, uh, his current collection of mosaics, Wait till you see what he can do with broken glass. Well, this all sounds very fascinating. I knew you'd come up with some really interesting folks uh, for this show in Middletown. Uh, Keisha, thank you so much for your guidance today. My pleasure. Please come visit Middletown anytime. Absolutely. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> So we're here on the property of Michael Pestel. I'm really, really curious to find out exactly how art, music, biology, even evolution all come together for this unique artist. Let's go check him out. Michael. 
Is that you, Ray? <laughs> How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Yes, good to see you. Great to see you. What do we have here? Thanks for coming. This is a small bird machine. And it's essentially a bass recorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is just the straight instrument. And I've attached it to this spinning device. The spinning device is actually uh, the hub from a 1956 Chevy. This is a siding tube, and I'm siding the horizon. I'm looking for birds, and I'm calling to them with my various, this happens to be a seagull, And then I've got a, I've got a blackbird here. I might also have a flock of sparrows in my hand. Oh, listen to that. Here, try them. Yeah. They're uh, bicycle inner tubes Look with, that. Uh, tea kettle-like sounding devices at the end. So when you squeeze them, you get that nice little percussive oh, bird yeah. sound. When did the fascination with birds begin for you? When I was very young, I think I had a, ha had a very strong relationship to birds. And then as I grew up, birds were just birds, you know? They're just out there, you're sort of aware of them, but I wasn't that interested in birding. I wasn't really interested in ornithology. And then, uh, and then I moved to Pittsburgh. And the special thing about that, I didn't realize at the time, was that they have the most amazing aviary. I was invited to do an art show there. And I thought, well, I, I don't know. I think, you know, I'm a flutist. I should, I, I should really think about playing flute with the birds. Mm -hmm. And so on the way, to the performance I stopped at the library, I had this idea that I, would, that I would read the names of the extinct birds. At the time, there were about 175 of them. And so that's, that's exactly what I did. I, I simply read the names of the birds uh, and the approximate date of extinction. And then I played a short riff as a kind of stand-in for sounds we can't hear anymore. Hawaiian O'o, 1935. And I get to about number 16, which was Passenger Pigeon, 1914. And suddenly I hear, and a light went off in my head. And that, that happened that Mimicry happened several, several more times during the performance. And then I was going to the aviary every Sunday morning at six o'clock and bringing friends with me, musicians, um, singers, dancers, and it became a whole thing in Pittsburgh. Uh, I did that for 10 years. So and, you were performing uh, with the birds? I was performing live with birds. Of course, we don't know what they sound like. Right. Most birds became extinct before recording technology in 1939. Um, so, you know, we can guess, but I'm, I'm not even so interested in guessing. And the one thing we have left of these birds are their names. We have the Latin name, the genus and the species, and that's Latin, so it's a dead language, but then we also have the vernacular name. So, how can I resuscitate these names? I've got a very simple algorithm. I'm, I'm not the first person to use this algorithm mm -hmm. where, uh, where the letters of the alphabet are applied to the- uh, Oh, sure enough. Uh, treble clef, bass clef, and then the names are translated into notes. Well, Michael, I'm really curious to see your prepared piano stuff. Can we go have a look at that? Sure, sure. Shall we go walk over there? Yeah, yeah, let's do that.
So Michael, we were talking before about a prepared piano. Right. This is a prepared piano. It is a prepared piano. It might be an over-prepared piano. It's a harp from an upright piano. Okay. And it does have some preparation over here, meaning that there are screws in between the strings, which gives it a kind of a gamelan sound. You know, the Indonesian orchestra. Sure, sure. Uh, but my discovery uh, on, on this thing is uh, the application of a glass block to the strings, especially the bass strings. And what happens is quite surprising. You get these very long sustains, as long as you want. Michael, let's go, I know you've got a real, a true prepared piano back with, here. And that's more, in, and, yeah. yes, I do. And that seems to be more in line with, um, with the extinct birds. Unlike, the other piano, um, I can play these with with the keys, you know, in the normal way. And the notes um, are also letters. The letters are also notes. So if I if I'm reading a word like Mauritanios, yep. which is uh, the species name, if I read it again syllabically, it's going to sound like this. These things here are what I call piano cluster boards. Maritanius, all the letters in that word expressed as a cluster. And it sounds like this. And if I change the keyboard by pressing the soft pedal, it sounds like this. Getting a nice vibration there. <laughs> I like the vibration. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so the name is played and the name decays. And it's a way of reconnecting with something that's gone. Yeah. Well, Michael, this is, is just truly fascinating. It's been an incredible afternoon. Uh, your music is so beautiful, and thank you. Just thank you for letting us come here. Well, thank you so much. Uh... So at the top of the show, I mentioned that we have a new segment for season two of Where Art Thou? So here goes. We get a sneak peek into the fascinating things that galleries, museums, arts organizations have in their storage. We call it What's in Your Attic, and our first stop is the Rand Building and Middletown's Oddfellows Playhouse Youth Theater. Well, this is called the Remington Rand Building. Uh, it's owned by the city of Middletown. I think it was built in like the 1890s or so. And it was originally a typewriter company. It has become now a small business incubator. So the city gives you know cheap rents to businesses to try to get started here. And, it was abandoned for a while. It's a super fun site, but it's coming back to life. We are here with Dick Wheeler. He's the executive artistic director of Odd Fellows Playhouse. And behind here is your storage space. It's true. This is where we keep all our circus things and a lot of assorted weird stuff. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so first, tell me a little bit about what's happening at Odd Fellows these days. Well, we are, um, you know, Odd Fellows has been around for 47 years, I guess, since 1975, and uh, we're a youth theater, so we do a lot of programs for kids from age three to 20. Uh, we have a teen repertory company that is this spring producing Greek tragedy called The Greeks, uh, two plays by Euripides. 
run a lot of classes for kids, neighborhood-based troops, and um, then we're getting ready for our summer program, which is the Children's Circus of Middletown, which is has about 170 kids for five weeks, and it's in its 34th season. Wow, yeah. and so this is where you keep the circus stuff? This is where we keep most of our circus stuff that we don't need during the school year. We keep it here for the summer, for the summer circuit. Right, right. All right, well, I'm super excited. Let's open that door. All right, it's a bit of a spectacle. <laughs> Let's see. All right. That is a big, solid door. It is a big, solid door, and this gets open. Uh, hold on. Oh. I got this. Yeah, and if you get that, now let me just get this. I, I, I love it. Okay, you ready? And we're safely in. Okay, <laughs> let's see what you got. All oh, right, okay. welcome. Here we go. <laughs> all right, so we've got all kinds of goodies in here. So Dick, here we are. This is amazing. And you know, I've been to the circus a few times in my day and I recognize some things here, right. but let's, let's talk about it. And let's talk about right behind you here with this cannon. All right, now this is, uh, this only comes out every few years. It's uh, for the Human Cannonball Act. <laughs> and it only, it only gets used if we happen to have identical twins in the circus that year. Okay, so you have to have identical You've twins. You've got to have identical twins, and that's always <laughs> okay. a cue to like, okay, we need to bring out the Human Cannonball Act this year, because basically it's all an illusion where we stuff, we you know, dress them both identically, stuff one kid into this, have a big buildup and a giant boom, and then everybody in the field, 200 people are all looking up and across and across and across and across, and then boom, 80 <laughs> feet over there, the second twin appears, and it's like, ta-da! And it's, it's a winner every time, but it's all illusion. No children are actually flying all right, we, we need All right, so we need some <laughs> identical twins here. That's right, we're hoping for identical twins this <laughs> summer. <laughs> That's awesome. Tell me about this cutie. Well, this is, this is one of our like giant puppets. The, the children's circus happens on a very large scale. So like, I, you know, the ring itself is about 80 feet in diameter. There's 160 kids out there, 20 piece band, 40 staff. So you got over 200 people. So everything's kind of on a big scale. And we were really inspired back in the early days. And we started the circus in the late 80s by Bread and Puppet Circus, which is up in Vermont. And, mm -hmm. um, so this is a, the frame of a giant llama um, that was in the circus in 2019. This is its body, gets wrapped around this frame. And then the head is, um, is separate. So that'll be connected to a neck and a separate, basically, I think four people carry the llama and then somebody <laughs> on the head. You know, it's when, when you need a random llama crossing the stage, we got it for you. You got it covered. Okay. Oh, and this is, okay, so th these are the fish juggling uh, stuff. <laughs> okay. So you can see when you need to have an underwater wow. juggling act, these are very useful. Don't know if you want to try. I usually start well, with I one. Well, I usually, I can do balls, but I've never done, so you. There you go. That's, that's, you, that's you what you're go, doing, right? That's how you start, just back and forth like that. Uh-huh. Right, and then always the trick is, is engaging the second one. Uh-huh. So you got like up, up. So it's the same throw, up, up. And about the time that the first one is about halfway across, you throw up the second, bump, bump. Let so me try that. So you're coming up. here and then underneath like that, That's right. right. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah, no, not almost. bad, not bad. Okay. Right, I think you've been practicing. <laughs> uh, I see some other trappings of, mm -hmm. of the circus. Uh, you got stilts. Most kids start by learning on stilts like these, which are, which are handheld, and you just step onto this and you hold, hold the hands. It's a partnership with the city of Middletown, so they, they handle the registration and they subsidize it. So that for a lot of kids, it's a free program. Yeah, that's great. Um, so it's very diverse. It really reaches all parts of the Middletown community. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, that's really one of the things that's special about it. I feel like over these 35 years, it's changed the kind of community that Middletown is because so many kids have grown up into adults and just learned to work together and learned to take these kind of risks and grow. And, and, and circus is all about trust. You know, you got to fear somebody's going up on your shoulders. You know, they got to trust you yeah. that you're not going to drop them. So, you know, there's that kind of just building of trust that 
that is immeasurable in a you know kids growing up. Well, Dick, I mean, this is just incredible. Thanks, Ray. Thanks. Great to have you visit our our hidden treasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dick, I'm going to give it a shot here. Okay. Remember, keep keep them close together. Yep. That's yeah. right. Pulling up with the hand and the foot. Pulling up with up the hand. hand and foot together. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Oh, you're owning it. <laughs> I'm going to join the circus. <laughs> so Keisha suggested that we go see artist Pierre Sylvain, and that's where we're headed. He's a Haitian-American artist, and he works in a lot of different mediums. And from what I hear lately, he's been really involved with glass mosaics and stained glass. So I'm really curious to see him. Let's check it out. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Tell me a little bit about yourself. My name is Pierre and uh, I am from uh, Haiti. So I you know, came on a third uh, town from uh, a Haiti. The name is uh, Lekai. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, very fortunate to be you know, exposed at the art at a very early age. You know, so uh, so in my uh, a neighborhood, we have like a, a, a lot of artists, so I'd be able to, you know, watch them working. Really? How much of Haiti is in your art? You know, what I have from like, you know, Haiti, you can always see those, you know, vibrant color. So, yeah. you know, so I still have it that. You're the kind of artist that that goes on jags, where for a while you'll be very involved in this particular medium, and then you'll move on. Is that yes, correct? Yes, 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 yes. That's you know pretty much correct because uh, when I you know first start, I was to do a lot of painting. So now I am doing glass, I am doing mosaic, and I am doing you know textile work because I feel like if I was doing just one thing, I mean I think that just the way. I am, so that will be like a little bit boring for me. Well, Pierre, I'm looking forward to seeing all the different jags you've got going on. So yeah, <laughs> let me you know, show you if you can uh, follow me downstairs. How important is it being in Middletown and working in Middletown to you? You know, that's my like second home. People uh, really love what I'm doing as in, you know, artists, you know, and, uh, and, and, and uh, when you are doing work on your, you know, studio, not like too many people see it. Mm -hmm. And the fact now people can just walk on, you know, main street, see them, you know? And so that just make me, you know, give me like a sense of pride, you know, joy, because, you know, a lot of people would, would you know, would see those, you know, pictures, they, you know, love them. I've noticed you have a lot of work that is inspired by social issues. Yes. Like racism and Me Too. How do you transform, I guess, an issue like racism? And how do you break it down into something artistic so people can see it in a different light? I find we are like a very, because we are so divided here, but with my, you know, work, my, you know, men, uh, main uh, goal to bring people together. Mm -hmm. I want to see your mosaics. And if we could, could we see you at work? Oh, sure. On some oh, of yeah, this? sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Right, I cool. will, you know, love to because that will, you know, give you like a whole idea how that, you know, process work. Great, great. Well, let's, well, let's do that. Yes. Pierre, what do we have here? So, you know, this is a new, a new piece I am uh, a, working on right now. So I can show you, you know, how you know how I do the the whole process. Yeah. So what I like usually do, I will do like a sketch. After that, I will you know decide what what you know kind of color of glass. So you have to like break them. Mm -hmm. So that's mean that's like a lot of work. So what I usually do, I will break it on a smaller pieces, mm -hmm. on a smaller like that. And uh And now, so I will glue it like that here mm -hmm. and just like figure it out where, where I will put it. 
I will take in and I know the PCs. I'll put it here. So I keep like doing that until I feel the whole thing. Yeah. So that means the piece is like almost done. Mm -hmm. How long will this take you? This thing here will, you know, will, you know, take me three weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But those, you know, big, you know, pieces you see here will like, you know, take me like three months. Yeah. 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 Those things like take like longer. But yeah. this one, cause it's like, you know, smaller. If I am working on it every day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would say two or like three weeks. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I can't much. wait to see what it looks like when it when it's done. Well, Pierre, we're going to get out of your hair here, and I just want to say thank you. I mean, this just your artwork is so inspirational, so beautiful, and I'm so glad to get a chance to see how you how you do your process here. Thank you so much. You know, I am so glad. You know, you guys come. I feel so honored. Thank you. Yeah. Same here. Well, that's a wrap for our day here in Middletown, an incredible day. You know, it's people like Pierre and Dick and Michael that make this part of the state truly special. Hey, do you have somebody in your neighborhood, in your town, that's doing some amazing artistic things? We want to hear about it. Drop me a line at whereartthou at ctpublic.org. Join me next week when I'll get back into that beat up old company van. We're going to head out to Waterbury and see some incredible young musicians there. You won't want to miss it. Until then, I'm Ray Hartman. Thanks for watching. Where Art Thou? <laughs>